Oh, good morning. It's been a while. I guess I should introduce myself. It's been so long. Oh, man, that medicine's so bitter. But I do not like the uh, pain management that's available today. Um, I used to specialize, subspecialize in pain management as a psychologist. Yes, I am known as Dr. John Taylor Kent. Forgive me, but this watered-down cherry juice, it's not too bad. And that damn pain pill is kind of bitter, but it's only half the size it should be for a guy my size. They are chintzy on the pain management medicine today because I guess the world has decided they have, we all have to be cruel to each other. We all have to inflict the most pain we can upon each other. It's really pretty bizarre. And I've done my best to watch out for people. And the people that I've watched out for, cared for, and loved have uh, snapped my ass pretty good this summer. So I, uh, I will welcome uh, my latest admirers to my show. Um, yeah, my detractors are following me to use my videos and what I say against me. So I, uh, I've been off the air because my phone's been filled up the memory and I just went through and I saved uh, two precious videos of me with my uncle together the last time I visited him and uh, I don't I don't think I saved much more than that I got rid of everything else so I didn't back up my channel I had already made up my mind to give up on the backup I was trying to hire somebody but the communication was really poor man was poor he could have used the work but he wouldn't communicate with me. Uh, if you don't communicate with me, how the hell can I employ you? So that's gone by the wayside. Uh, also, we're living through about the most evil times, well, the most evil times of my life, which has been a pretty long life. And so it's best to duck and cover at times like this. I know that some of the things that are up there on my channel are gonna cause me trouble. And we're getting ready the government has assembled lists of people they're going to purge. And, and I don't know how many lists I'm on, but you can bet I'm on there pretty high because they track my ass and shadow ban my ass as much as they can. Why do they do that? Well, they can't have you knowing or thinking freely. And you, you know, the thing is that my job has always been to help you to deprogram yourself so that you could think for yourself and do something on your own. But the problem is most of us aren't very aware. And above all, we're not very self-aware. So um, last night, my old roommate and I were having a conversation. And I, uh, I guess I was glad to talk to him, but interrupting him. Uh, he's younger than I am. And uh, I helped him out when he was younger. And as we get older, I think it's, he's helping me out. So he, uh, I, I sent him an apology text and, and thanked him for his patience with me. The, the sad thing is that part of what we do is we run on and just people list, listen to us. This is a pattern for all of us now. I'm not, just, I'm not just talking about one individual, but my example last night was kind of profound and it's profoundly disappointing. Uh, my old roommate, Steve, was trying to get me to back off of this young lady that I, I found attractive and I was interested in. Oh, and I'm thinking in the back of my own, oh, not her, you know. Well, she's different or we're different and all that. And it's like, <laughs> my God, she, uh, Steve tells me as he interrupts me towards the end of the conversation. Remember, John, men build, women destroy. I wonder where he got that. <laughs> He got it from me. He was report, re, re, repeating what I said back. And of course, that video, by the way, I no longer have possession of it because I, I chopped it off into ethers to make room for this video and other videos so I could help you a little bit more. So what we do to each other is we run on talk. We keep throwing our ideas out there. And the crazy part is we are always, now this is all of us, saying something that's not true, not valid, or needs clarification. But you're not allowed to 
ask questions or interrupt the other person, especially a woman with pressured speech, fast, rapid speech, which indicates a few things. One is it, it indicates a sharp mind, okay? And if you want to hear pressured, pressured speech and a woman talking quickly, you should hear the Thai language. My God, their brains have to work fast to process that language. I'm not saying anything bad about them or I'm not trying to figure out that Thai women is problematic at all. I, I love them and in, in, in college, well, I tried, I have to admit, but we were just all a bunch of friends, which was okay. But they were cute girls who acted feminine in some ways, and that femininity is lost when it comes to American women. They just don't understand it. So I'm going to remind you, yes. Men build culture, they build society, we build things. And women, for some reason, and I have my hunches on this, destroy things. So it's just like an innate quality. They are destroyers. They destroy culture and destroy civilizations. And if you don't believe me, look up on the internet, James Unwin, published in 1934, on, uh, let's see, Sex and Culture. It's available for a free PDF download. He actually finished the book in 1932 and waited two years because he wanted to make sure he was right before he published. And he had two things to say in the book, and I'm gonna make it easy for you. The first was what once women's sexuality became unbridled, these are his words, there was no putting that genie back in the bottle that genie would not go back in the bottle. And once women's sexuality became unbridled in every civilization he had access to to study their records, their history, that culture was soon thereafter, well, it vanished from the face of the earth. So what I'm telling you is that the biblical pattern, which we can draw from Eve, in the book of Genesis is that women act in ways that cause destruction. Now, before you go off half cocked and all that, remember, women are different than men. Even the name woman has got more letters in it, two more letters in the word men. And what we know is that if we read the Bible carefully, we know that Eve cuckolded Adam. She had sex with another male and had a male child with this other male and that male child murdered his half-brother. And that's where all this stuff on the planet started this Earth Age. Got that? This Earth Age. But we've inherited <clears throat> refuse from previous earth ages and I'm reading a very fine book that's giving me the time guidelines that I need uh, there was a disturbance in the force if you will there was a disturbance across the entire universe I believe that's the case at least the galaxy certainly across our solar system and the earth and it was about four earth ages ago I've been thinking that it was six earth ages ago now what's an earth age uh, you want to know exactly what it is according to the clocks that we use and agree upon today which again is a construct of current mankind 12,068 years however there was one period that was less than well it was less time than that so it threw things off a little bit on the clock it was a shorter period so yes I'm still researching it and, I, and I'm delving into it. Now, first of all, this is the big book. You know, all of us people drunk on the Bible, this is the best one to get. This is this is the latest and greatest version of the uh, Bible in the English language, modern English language. That is the proper name version of the King James Bible. And I, I know some religious jackass out there is telling me, oh, it's copyrighted. Uh, that's a problem because the King James Bible isn't copyrighted. Look, look, you dumb son of a bitch. I knew that. I thought I did. 
And then I got educated and the publisher told me how hard it was to publish this Bible so he could do it and get it out worldwide. Because the uh, copyrights on that King James Bible are only voided in, in the United States of America because of the American Revolution. The King James Bible is copyrighted and it's owned by the doggone, well, I'd like to say the bitch on the throne, but that asshole on the throne there, king over there. Their outfit over there owns the rights to it. Five years of negotiations before he got copyrights and could do it the way he wanted to do it. You know, most people aren't going to know that because they don't go around sitting having lunch with publishers. Um, I'm, I miss I miss him. I'd love to go visit him again. Um, now, what I am getting at is I'm going to watch out what I say here because I have two strikes. I don't agree with the strikes at all, but you know how it is with tyrants and dictators. Uh, there's no talking to them about these things. So uh, uh, my channel if it's I get a third strike they'll probably take down all these videos so if you would like please feel free to back these up my only adage is don't don't you dare try to charge anybody for them if you're gonna make money off them then you need to sell some of that some of it to me okay you need to actually it's real simple you know send me a doggone email message or call me up or something and ask for my permission and, and cut me a little bit of a deal I mean, I don't mind 25%. I don't mind 50%, which is where I think it ought to be. But, but you know, something of nothing is nothing anyway. So having a little bit would be nice. Now, I'm looking for the latest book. And of course... I rearrange things and put it down here and, and I'm not going to be able to find it. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's got to be up on the counter somewhere. I wanted to show you the cover and let you know the title. It was called The Day of the Lord uh, by Douglas Vogt, V-O-G-T, a Jewish gentleman who I believe passed away last year. I haven't been able to confirm that. I just have that from one source. Now, why is this book important? It appears the gentleman was right. My initial reactions were, nah, he's got it wrong. I still think he could have it wrong, but he actually gives us a, an end date. So folks, in case you're wondering, there is a day of expiration upon this earth age, and we're coming up to it rather closely, rather soon. If you're in my audience, the odds are you will not be alive when that day occurs. I'm not planning on it. Maybe I'll make it that far. I kind of doubt it, though, because I'm under the medical profession, and the standard of care is to kill us off as fast as they can. So, yeah, I've got to be careful what I say because they don't like me saying things that run contrary to the medical military industrial complex. Uh, so I also am probably unique in that I have given you what I believe is the way out of this change of the earth age um, a way to perhaps overcome it i've discovered the pattern in the bible and uh, yeshua referred us to the book of jonah and i've covered that in a previous video which i no longer have a copy of but it's up there and hopefully you can find it i do not have myself well organized i i think if i was well organized um, there'd be outlines and titles and and all that uh, I'd have I'd have I'd be able to go back to the video I, but I don't have a secretary I, I actually was hoping to uh, maybe that's where I went wrong when I offered to uh, bring her into my business and, and share it with her but uh, I mean I, I was I was at a point where I was thinking man I'm not doing very well with it let her have it all because she has tremendous needs but then it's like no no I'll split it. Split's pretty good. You know, she needs money badly. I need money too. And as I said, I'll probably end up spending what I get on her anyway. She needed clarification on that. You don't need clarification on that. It just makes common sense. Of course, if you want to interfere with my ability to spend money on you, 
then go ahead and end the relationship like you did. Now, I love it when they disqualify themselves. It saves me a lot of trouble. And so I got up and I start, fired up the phone here. Um, the gout's improving. I got it. I got the, the foot taken care of to the point where I could put a dress shoe on and show up in court for a hearing. And then the, the, the foot gave me holy hell that evening and that night. Um, I think the nurse practitioner called it right. I just don't like the pain management. Um, it's it's impoverished. You know, take this in case if, if the pain breaks out. What do you mean breaks out? It hasn't gone away yet. And then she gives me the little, the little half-size pills. You know, they don't want an addict out there. And I know, in case you're wondering, um, the pharmacy records are, are all connected. There's no privacy on that because she called in the uh, the drugs at two different locations and I got notice from the other one that the uh, painkiller was ready as well so it's like well it's only 10 tablets I need it for backup and she didn't give me enough enough pain medicine to get through the weekend that's what bothers me and I will chew her out about that now she got the rest of it right and of course a lot of you are gonna say well it's just because she's a woman Dr. Kid no it's because she's a medical asshole lording it over me now I walk in and I tell them what I need. And they never want to give it to me because they want to lord it over me. Thank God she didn't give me another damn dementia screening test like the other bitches have. Because the next time they start that up, I'm going to stand up and say, we're done here. Obviously, you don't understand who I am or what I'm about. And you're not going to insult me and waste my time. And develop that kind of a record about me it shows that you're not safe so I think because of my age Medicare requires them to give it but I'm just gonna set them on their asses next time no I'm not submitting to that test you know it's no good it's not valid how many times have I administered one of those tests come on baby I have administered it more times than you're probably ever going to administer it these people can't help but follow the narrative and read the script. They have no common sense, very low intelligence. Now, I have busted my ass to learn what I've learned and to educate myself and make something of myself. Did I have much to start with? Well, that's questionable, and I admit that. The, the records, I guess if we were to dig the records, are out there showing I had imbalances and deficiencies. My, my aptitude uh, and I fought to overcome the limitations that those tests indicated I had so I didn't choose the easy path no not at all I went down the hardest road possible for me and I think it worked I think it helped but I still I still feel hobbled and inadequate because I can't explain things adequately to people I, I can't remember a tremendous amount of stuff that I've read and it has to do with information overload. Um, I, when I'm talking to you, things come out of my mouth and I go, whoa, man, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. And sometimes I even go, man, where did that come from? And then I also have to realize that some of what I say is on the prophetic side. I, and I hate saying that because I don't want people running around Dr. Kent says he's a prophet, or he's a pastor, you know, and I got friends I call up, and, and they always call me pastor by mistake, and I mean, I, they laugh, we laugh, I mean, it's okay, but yeah, I'm here trying to settle things down so that you can actually think straight for the next couple of decades, because things are going to get worse on the planet. That's my hunch, and I don't have many people I can turn to, or many records I can turn to. I'm not in a fantastic metropolis with huge libraries like I had in San Diego. I knew those libraries so well if I needed something. I had it down to the point where I could cover them about an hour, an hour and a half. I could hit the four major libraries. I knew where the journals were. I knew where the sections were. And I could get what I wanted and what I needed. And I, you, know, you don't see piles of books behind me. I've had to divest myself of those several times. Twice I've had to divest of the psychology books and twice of the music books. I could fill 
entire, if I had bookcases around my room here, uh, I could fill them all a couple of times. So, and I marked up my books and I dog-eared the pages and I did my best and I go back to those for the, you know, for the prime information I'm looking for. And books still are the way to go. They're always going to be the way to go because the electronic records, they're censoring those. They're censoring the paper records too, as fast as they can. They're censoring the architectural records, especially the good architecture. They destroyed the buildings or they build over those ornate structures so that uh, we don't realize that how how much better the previous civilization was. Their skills, their workmanship, craftsmanship were far superior to what we have now. And the general principle upon that, I believe, is found in the apocryphal books. Now, in case you're wondering, I go for the apocrypha in this book. I was hoping to get one more fresh copy before they sold out of them, but I don't. And this is a peculiar one. This is, I think it's a 2003. I don't have the lights on behind me, so hang on while I read the copyright date. And if you go to buy this, Amazon will suggest a newer, more current version, which is not as good. So there's, and, and this has got the apocryphal books, new annotated, new Oxford annotated Bible, augmented third edition, standard revised version, which doesn't have the spirit in it, in case you're wondering with the apocryphal slash Deuter canonical books. Michael D. Coogan, editor. That's Oxford Press. And let's go to the, uh, oh my God. Okay, I got this set up a little bit better. Hold on. Uh, it's tiny little print, copyright 1973-7791. And this particular edition, Copyright 2007. So I do recommend this if you want to get into the apocryphal books. And there's more in the apocryphal books in this version than there is in the original 1611 King James. Um, that's I believe that's because this version comes from another source that's far more accurate. Uh, in one chapter of one book of Ezra the prophet in here, there's 111 more verses. That's quite an omission. Uh, they explain the order for those going to heaven the, and the order for those who don't make it. So they explain the order for those who are, are, are saved and the order for those who are condemned. And so I know that a lot of us, and I include myself in that because sometimes I go into that camp, think that there's no afterlife. Well, I got news for you. The whole structure of this universe was built around our souls to support it and what we're doing here. And so there really is an afterlife and it gives you the order, the rewards, and also the, well, the sentencing basically of the bad guys. Uh, it has more than that in here. It also in the apocryphal books of, of, of Ezra, I'm using his name that you'd recognize. The Latinized name is Esdras with a D in it. He goes, the angel explains to him the earth age and where we are. And one of the one of the things the earth the angel explains to Ezra is that the earth's children are weaker towards the end of the earth age. At the beginning of an earth age, the earth's children are stronger. No shit, man. Well, we get knocked down to thirty thousand individuals or maybe five thousand individuals. That's all that survives in Earth Age and carries this on. And in case you're wondering, you know, the native uh, the native men, the Chinamen, if you will, the uh, Mongoloids, have been on the planet longer than anybody else has. All right, we're talking millions of years longer, and they've survived the Earth Ages. Uh, I'm not saying they did well or they survived in large numbers. And in case you're wondering, uh, yeah, uh, the oceans will be going away pretty soon, um, according to the Book of Revelations, the Apostle John. Uh, that's going to happen. Uh, your children, if they survive it, what's coming, are going to see that. They're going to be able to walk across the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and marvel at all of those old, the ruins of all of the previous civilizations. And some land is going to rise up, some land's going to go down. That's from one of my visions a long time ago. So, and there's a lot of changes coming very, very fast. Um, 
Edgar Casey's work has been suppressed. Um, they sure as hell don't want me talking about that or telling you that, you know, we found out the Devil's Triangle is actually, well, it's where one of the weapons is buried uh, for Atlantis. One of the three parts of the weapons was put there so that they, well, it's still saved. And the bastards are going for it. They're going to they're gonna find it. And when they put it together, the sad thing is, it'll probably destroy the Earth again. Now, that's mankind. That's what mankind can do to the planet. Yeah, we can destroy it. But what's, what's God do to it? Well, the indicators are that God knows all of the, all the stars at the same time. I mean, that's the far-reaching extent of my knowledge base from reading Voigt's book. But I don't agree with that just yet. I don't see all the evidence for it. As far as the dates go, he says that the date is October 16th, 2046, plus or minus 60 days. And how did he get to that date? He says that that's the date when the heavens open their floodgates and rain down water for the first time on the face of the earth at Nova's flood. I don't think he's got the date right on that. I don't think that happened 12,068 years ago. I think it was closer to halfway back through this present earth age. But sadly, I think Douglas, who didn't have a doctorate, by the way, and I have to admit, I don't think anybody with a doctorate had the creativity, had the ability to come up with what he came up with. He really did a lot of work. He teased it out into incredible charts and stuff. And the nice thing about it is that he did a lot of work and indicated a lot of things to me, which I don't think he realized. So I'm going to do my best to digest his book. I've got other things on my plate too, but I'm going to do my best to digest it and, and get back with you. So basically 2046 is how far away? It's not even 23 years away. It's 22 years away. Yeah, 22 years away. And the reason for plus or minus 60 days is that that's a window in which the instability. And by the way, the Earth's mantle is separating from the core already. I, I believe the core is uh, accelerating. And the, uh, and, so, and the crust, the mantle somewhere is, has, has become liquefied. And so the crust is going a little bit slower in anticipation for what's coming. Um, you can forget about global warming because you're going to have a whole lot of it in a little while because the first thing that happens are massive, massive, warm, maybe even hot rains. It's going to be pretty universal. But don't ask me for the order of these things because this is all new for me. And there's uh, some other books out there with some incredible stuff. Um, I've got another book, the, the Book of Adam and Eve or something that... Uh, a fellow wrote named his nickname was Chan and he actually uh, was a brilliant man and he uh, he did it through intuition which I am I, I had tremendous intuitions and I still get them and the sad thing is I ignored them a child has intuitions and learns how to ignore them over time so you know I love having a dog because my dog's intuition is like perfect I mean she knows when somebody's bad she alerted upon a uh, fellow that, that was working for me to let me know how bad he was. And the guy actually has done a good job of destroying my life. And, well, well I don't want to get into that here right now. Uh, but I don't, I, I'm not laying down on, on things. Just not. That's the way it is. Um, I would ask for your prayers. I've had my, I've had a, I guess this is about a gout, a gout attack. Um, I've had all kinds of warnings, and of course, I read the, uh, I read immediately. What can I eat? What can I not eat? And it looks like, man, you, you can't eat anything. And then, of course, I realized that I went and bought some of my favorite flavored kefir, and it's flavored with fructose. And I found, I finally, you know, I buy the, the organic blueberries, and they're only in season for a little while. And when they're in season, the price is low and the taste is good. Yeah, they are in season and I can't eat them. So I'm going to probably be, well, I can eat them a little bit maybe, but I'm probably going to be washing these blueberries and putting them in the freezer to have for another time. So 
fructose is totally out for me and it's kind of sad because I, well I'm a little bit addicted to it and I like it but I now have to knuckle down and not buy flavored kefir I have to buy the the plain stuff which has got natural sugars in it anyway and it's not the sugars I'm after in oh and by the way in case you're wondering sugar is safer than fructose who would have thought anyhow I hope you'll welcome me back. I hope that you'll tune in. Share these videos with people. Do like the video. I know everybody's got to say that all the time. And everybody has to introduce themselves all the time. And I stopped doing that. I figured, what the heck? You know, I'm not that. I don't have that much narcissism in me. Only uh, the only people who tried to claim I had narcissism in me were people who were trying to control me. Or maybe tease me. I'm not sure which yet, but I think it was more of a way to try to get control. Um, I have a lot going for me. I've worked very hard over my life. I have several degrees. I have uh, five formal degrees, and my informal education is much more vast than that. I've had a vast library. I've read books that I don't even remember well. I've read some of the Mason's books. Um, had their big hard book a while back. I read some of the, uh, of uh, whatever, White's, the, the woman, uh, White, who made herself a prophet. I, I've had some of her books and read that stuff as well. And I had James Churchward Board's books. I collected a series of those and read that. And by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, the fellow that a lot of you, well, I think he's recently passed away, but he was housed at the... Uh, Rockefeller or Kennedy Center in New York. He was working for them. Don't remember his name offhand, but he plagiarized all the works of James Woodward. That's how he got, you know, the spacemen and the architecture and the symbols and all that. It came out of James Wood Churchward. C H U R C H W A R D. So James Churchward's books were called occult. And later, when I had some problems in my life, was freaking out and trying to remove the stress. I tossed those, wow, a long time ago. And uh, so, uh, Sitchin's, Sitchin plagiarized. Also, we have another uh, plagiarist out there, and that would have been Mr. Brown, who, uh, well, maybe Mr. Brown wrote the original book. But that book, that work was plagiarized as well. And then we have another plagiarist out there who is alive today who plagiarized the work, the creature from Jekyll Island is actually a, well, the book, the fellow who wrote the book first was Eustace Mullins, and the fellow who wrote the book, well, he sold more copies, he marketed himself better, but he never gave proper um, respect to uh, Eustace Mullins. I always give uh, my re references because I learned early on nobody wants to hear from me. They all want references. I, mean, I was in what seventh grade it felt like and it was like I got to have references? You mean I can't have an original idea? And then of course some things I've espoused are not original ideas but I, I cheese the medical doctors, the guys with active licenses that they have to defend and how do they defend those licenses by keeping their mouths shut and not telling the truth so I finally they told me you can't say that John Dr. Kent you cannot say that and I laughed at him I says you know I don't have a license to defend or family to support you do so you can just cite me as you can cite me I'm okay you cite me as the source for this so we have references to various brave doctors throughout history which, who told us the truth. All that's been censored to set up this current scheme that we have going on now. And in case you're wondering, this thing about all you were taught was a lie, that's actually true. And the problem with talking to somebody like me is that if you said something and your assumption is an error, and maybe you're not aware of it, I'll stop you and try to correct you. That's where I got into trouble last night. But I'm not going to have things shoved down my throat like uh, Thanksgiving, the uh, pilgrims genocided the Indians. Are you kidding? Oh, and she's holding on to that because of her, well, because of her racism. 
But basically, she's, a, she's saying that, that we came over on Thanksgiving, we uh, genocided the Indians. Look, what happened at Thanksgiving is the Indians saved our asses. We were starving. The crops we planted didn't work. The type of government that they started with did not work. They had to abandon it or they were going to starve to death. So that's the early American exper experiment. They tried the communal stuff and people wouldn't carry their fair share and they weren't producing enough food to eat and they weren't going to make it through the winter. And who shows it up? A couple of, of, of Native American Indians, Mongoloid men. And one of them is very, got a really big heart, and he's going to save these pilgrims, these Christians. That's right. That's what was going on. They were going to die. The Indians showed up with a bounty, with the food, with the friendship, and showed them how to plant crops there in the new land, you know, showed them how they did things, and um, they saved the pilgrims. And I, I pointed that out to her, and she gets pissed off. I'm sorry. I mean, can we not have some positive interaction? Or are you going to hold on to this bullshit and run over me? And if I don't agree with you, you're going to tell me I am being, I'm being rude? Well, you're running over me with a view of the world that's not accurate, not true. And you, oh well. All I can say is that men let her have the last word. Men. Be grateful when she unselects herself. When she eliminates herself, you're safe. When you eliminate her, all hell and fury can break loose. Now, I'd like to be able to treat every woman as precious, but if she's not going to respect me, there can be no love. And that's also quite true of well, of other people I really don't want to talk about here, but, but I, I feel for the husband uh, of the man, who, he and his wife own this particular business that uh, has damaged me and harmed me terribly. And uh, I feel for him because she's just overwhelmingly strong and browbeating. She's a real bitch. <laughs> she's a very negative person. And uh, I did my best to, uh, to assuage her to um, interact with her in a way to get her to laugh and, and have things go well. And I actually gave her advice on, on the family. And you know, when I saw things, I was concerned and I spoke up for them. I did that with the whole family. And then they, they lie, they perjure, they slander. They, I mean, and the judge allows that bullshit in court. That ain't no justice. Anyway, the problem we have is that women want to dominate men. And of course, I'm thinking about this lady that I'm seeing attractive. I'm feeling kind of fond for her. We're talking almost daily. The bond is growing. And as I try to take her into my life a little bit more directly, she decides she's going to dominate me. She's going to overtalk me. I have to believe every word out of her mouth. I have to believe her version of the world. Um, and I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, I guess I do that to other people too, but it seems like that's what we're doing to each other. And even with my roommate, it gets a little, a little contentious and I should listen to him a little bit more. I know that he's really looking out for my best interest. And uh, the conversation last night was, he thanked me for it. And I, I, he helped me tremendously. I told him I always enjoy talking with him. Um, <sighs> Old friends are just wonderful friends. Someone who's willing to be honest with you, someone who's willing to tolerate your bullshit and have some patience with you, it's wonderful. It really is. Um, we are too busy trying to express ourselves and we have all of these views that are not proper, these assumptions, and we just embed those in there and keep on going. And so we aren't, it's not very good communication. However, in the future, according to the Bible, there will come a time when you will look for another man just because you want to have a conversation. So I know you probably think there are too many people on the planet right now and it's too crowded 
especially when you're going through rush hour traffic, uh, when the connections are not exactly the most positive. Take your time and have a good conversation. If you can have good food and good company at the same time, I mean, that's wonderful living right there. That's what I value. Um, I like that best. Um, do follow my videos. This is going to be getting very interesting as I try to convey things to you I think are important. Um, we are going towards the end of the Earth age. The, uh, the magnetism, the frequency, the Schumann frequency of the Earth. Um, I didn't have a chance to talk to my buddy about it. He's a, a musician. He's a professional. Um, and he would, he would know this or could research it for me rather quickly. Very brilliant man. I think he was born a, a Jew in, uh, uh, on Long Island or something, and a uh, very sharp mind, um, and nice, nice guy too. Uh, I finally had to ask him what he considered himself, and he reminded me that I had introduced him to Sikhism, and that's the path he's followed. So, I mean, that's how he identifies, and I, I have a lot of respect for that because he does his best to live according to the tenets. So he's not just thinking about it, he, he lives it. And it's always good to be a reminder of that. And I love Indian food, and I like going down to the restaurant, hanging out with the Indian friends there, and talking with the owner's son, who's doing better. I don't know, it's like his second or third brain surgery. And I'm, I mean, he's a wonderful man. He's put out a little bit of weight. I almost didn't recognize him, but he's still got a big heart about him. Um, I know we're not really, really close friends at all, but I mean, we talk. And uh, I think that, you know, I distract him from the work a little bit. And it's just really good to see him having recovered. He couldn't work for quite a while. The brain surgery knocked him on his ass for a few months. He couldn't remember what he was doing well enough to take orders for, for people to eat food. So I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for his recovery. Um, I would like to see the earth recover. I'm going to tell you and I'm going to keep telling you. Yahweh does not want us living outside of relationship with him. We were not designed to do that. And the devil and his children own and run the planet. And that's their number one job is to be a wedge between you and Yahweh. And to make us all challenge everything and to step outside of his grace and protection. Now, I know you're going to say you can't force your views on anybody else. And as my lady friend said last night, well, people are too judgmental. And I told her, no, the problem is people aren't judgmental enough. And that includes me. We become wishy-washy, mamby-pamby. We lose the ability to come up with fine discriminations of thought. Now, I want a sharp mind like a double-edged sword. The double-edged sword cuts both ways. Truth cuts both ways. And in case you're wondering, I need to be corrected as well, hopefully gently. Um, and I, I know I'm not always gentle, but I try to be. But the problem is we don't think clearly anymore. And that word discrimination is a key word because you blow up when you hear it because you assume racial discrimination. No, no, no. Fine discriminations of thought means you can split the hairs. You can discern what is best down to the hairs of that decision. So you come to a certain area of decision, then you have better decisions, more refined decisions. You have to have that ability to think clearly. Otherwise, they can tell you all these lies and otherwise they're keeping you confused. That's their purpose right now is to confuse us as much as they can. That's the purpose according to Mr. Casey of the CIA to make sure nothing we know is true. So when you go through your life, remember, I don't know if it's, if it's true or not, but I'm going to tell you how to get to the truth. You get these two tablets right here you get the one with the apocrypha in it it's in modern english doesn't have the spirit in it omit some verses add some verses takes words out puts them in the way they don't belong and they result in assumptions and they help you in your man-made tradition called religion which is not what's in the bible and you should get this one 
because it's got the spirit in it. It's got the easiest English to learn and to know and to understand. And it's different than the original 1611 in subtle ways so that you will not make, and I will not make, erroneous assumptions, thereby building a false tradition of man. Now, most everybody today realizes that Jesus wasn't born on Christmas Day. That's for a whole another video, but really what it comes down to is we've been taught and we've gone along with little lies, which add up to big lies. And at this point, the whole thing is screwed up. The United States of America ceased to exist, certainly as a republic, 1913, 1813, those were the two big years. 1933, another big year. 1871, another big year. 1971, another big year. Um, we're off the trail. And you and I are, our, our destiny is to recover the Republic if we can. We lost the Republic. It wasn't just us, it was our parents. I tried to explain things to my father, got pissed off. He didn't want to hear the truth. Didn't want to know any of that stuff. Overshadowed me, wouldn't hear me, and did not like me because I didn't go along with the narrative. You know, little shot never hurt anyone. I don't feel it. Nobody knows anything. Why don't you take the shot? <laughs> I already told you why. Why won't you listen to me and preserve your life? Anyway, this is the yardstick. This is the guideline. This is just a helping aid, and it does do some help in the apocryphal books. The continuation of prophecies are in here. I'm looking for better versions of this stuff all the time. There's a Bible out of Ethiopia that's supposed to be the oldest, and I believe the language is called Gair, G-E apostrophe E-R. I don't say it right. It's, it's pronounced a little differently, and they've got 81 books in their Bible. This has got 66 books. This has got 80 books. Buy my Bibles. Please do. Please share them with other people. Get these out there. It's hard to get a good Old Testament in particular, but this is the whole thing right here, and it is the best version. The translation is head and heels above this red book, okay? just way above it. Um, now, I think it's a good idea to read from multiple Bibles and refer across versions because there are subtle differences that don't quite make it in the translation. And, and there's all kinds of, of nuances that we lose. But I think one of the biggest problems I have with Douglas Voigt's uh, book is he, well, he's Hebrew centric, he's Jewish centric which means basically he claims the Jewish alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, rather. He claims that it's, it's the Hebrew, it's, you know, it's the Hebrew alphabet. And I got news for you. They borrowed that alphabet from the Phoenicians, the guys that were on ships, whose laws came to rule the present world. They were out of Polynesia. The last Earth Age, that's where they survived from and came off ships and ended up in the Middle East. We ended up with Paleo-Hebrew by stealing the Phoenician alphabet. Don't ask me about all these mysteries and where this leads us to because I don't know. I'm on the path as well. I'm learning every day. I have been researching this for more than 65 years. Yeah, I'm that freaking old, okay? I have been researching this since I was a little boy and it didn't make any sense. And I pointed things out to my parents and they couldn't handle the questions. And not only that, they didn't like having to answer the questions. They didn't like it. The little boy talks innocently and truthfully and has better intuition and better insights than the crazy adults. Their world doesn't make sense. Why is it this way, mom or dad? <laughs> and what would my mother say? Stop trying to save the world. The goal is to get your children across that finish line into the new age. That's right. 
you and I aren't going to make it. It will take everything that we have to get our children across that finish line. The devil and his children know that. They want their kind to succeed in greater numbers than our kind. I got news for you. They don't quite understand what's coming. And I have to be careful because those sons of a bitch has learned from me. Yeah, you see, the truth is in the Bible, and they know that, and they know the Bible better than you or I do. And they twist it up pretty good. And you have to understand they've done a lot of mind fucking among each other. So they give each other all this weird information, these weird uh, forbidden knowledge, you know, uh, hidden rights or whatever, uh, and they get them all off the deep end. And before they know it, they're doing satanic rituals. They're doing stuff they know they shouldn't do, but they're in too deep. And some of these gentlemen have come forward and told us about it. Some of these gentlemen have told us some incredible things. I listen to them. I don't bother with with the television news anymore because uh, Goebbels would be proud of them because they carry on in Goebbels tradition. Uh, pure propaganda. So please realize that America is gone. And what's in its place are four corporations known as, called as, the United States of America with different spellings and capitalizations and little different words. And they took away our Constitution. They took away our rights. They took away the law of the land and gave us maritime law, admiralty law, interstate commercial code, which is against the Constitution. And they made us all enemies to the Constitution as well. What those guys have done in the Congress is so bad and so horrible that I don't think any one of them is innocent. And I think they're guilty of uh, really serious crimes. At this point, they're guilty of genocide. And so we're partaking in that system. So you and I are partaking in their guilt of shedding innocent blood. How much innocent blood? Uh, on a well, it depends on your perspective, but between 1,000 and 2,000 Palestinians a day in Gaza are murdered every day. And Israel was on the verge of civil war before they did a false flag and did this invasion into Israel. You've got to understand that Hamas was controlled and created by the Israeli Mossad. They know exactly what they're doing, folks. And they know exactly what they've done to America. So when you invite a genocidist madman into the Congress and you interrupt his speech 57 or 58 times and you give him standing applause, what the hell's wrong with you? That's not in America's best interest. And in case you're wondering, America will be going down. Why? Because we support the devil and the devil's children. And the rest of the world is fed up. You don't hear the truth. I don't hear it much either. I get a little closer to you because I listen to great men. I listen to fantastic interviewers. And I keep an open mind. And I pray to Yahweh. And I measure everything by this particular book, which I finally broke the binding on. I should send it back to Kirby, Kirby and tell him I want my money back, right? No. This has got my study notes in it. It becomes a reference book for me. But I'm going to, I got another version. I'm just waiting for it to get shipped to me. And it's got tabs and it's black instead of brown. And that's, that's the expensive one. And this is large print. It's easy to read. Get it. It, it does not have more commentary and more lies in the margins, like the Schofield Reference Study Bible, which was financed by Samuel Untermeyer, a Jewish gentleman, and there was a committee of rabbis that wrote that Bible and published that about 1917. I think that's when they published it. And they lied in the margins. They talk about Moses as a Jew. There were no Jews in Moses' time. They lie about so much in that Bible, it's not funny. So I use the Bible as a guideline. 
And the Bible keeps opening itself up more and revealing more to us as we read. It is a lifetime book, and it is extremely important. This is the only way for you, I believe, to access the mind of Yahweh, the Lord, and to find the path to salvation. Now, I believe that there is a life after this one, and thank God it's nothing like this life. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to miss the beauty of this earth. I'm going to miss some of the fine food. And I even understand why the angels were so tempted to go into the daughters of men. Because they're so beautiful. And especially at my age, they're all beautiful. And I do my best to live up to my training given by my dear mother. And she told me, you will, if you're, you have a seat and a woman comes in the room, you will get up. And you will walk across that room and you will take her by the hand and you will march her back to your seat and give her your seat. This is my training when I was about six or seven years of age. And then every woman you run into, you will give a compliment to. I don't care if you have to make something up. You're going to give her a compliment. I don't care if you have to lie. Yeah, mom told me that. I'm like, what? It's okay to lie? Yeah. So I did do those things. And then I'll never forget. I wish I could remember how old I was, but I think I was around 50 years of age. And we're in a bookstore. And uh, no, this was at home. This is in the house, and this was about 2009, 2010. And my mother says to me, uh, she lectures me, you are a male chauvinist pig. Oh, what? What? Okay, Mom. I listened to her, and she explained to me from her bobbed-off short feminist haircut why I was a, a male chauvinist pig. And I smiled at my mom softly and looked at her and I listened intently and respectfully. And she kept going and I just kept listening. And I smiled and I leaned in a little bit more. And I smiled just a tad bigger. This went on for a while. And you know, and, and I was at the time about five foot 10 and my mother was five foot two. So there I was with my head I wasn't trying to encroach upon her, but I was just getting closer to her to get her attention. And I was smiling as softly and sweetly as I could to my mother, whom I love. And she finally paid attention to me and stopped her rant. And she looked at me and says, what, 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 what? I says, Mom, you reared me this way. I love it when they unselect themselves because we men have to get outside of the wrath. There can be no love where there is no respect. If she doesn't respect you, you must command respect. And how do you command respect? You put your shields up. You put up good, strong boundaries. You walk off. You don't talk with them. You have nothing to do with them. Until they come around and realize what they've done because she's going to continue to dominate you and to be even more destructive. It's inherent in a woman's nature as a mother to be far more vindictive, far more vicious, far more venomous than any man. You see, women compete on all levels with other women. They don't even like other women very much. And a woman never wants to work for another woman. She wants to work for a man. Because he's a lot more gentle and kind and easier to work with. Women do have it rougher. It's more of a balancing act. But when they just dominate a culture, the civilization is destroyed. So America has been slated for destruction in that social sphere and in other spheres as well. In case you're wondering, it's in the book. As Sodom and Gomorrah and her neighbors, so you are to me. And it describes the nuclear destruction, which is coming. My buddies in South Africa tell me, John, relax. 
You can't stop it. You can't save them. Okay, fine. Whew. I'm taking his advice. I'm just going to relax. And my other buddy tells me, John, they're all nine-year-olds. In other words, they're past the age of reason. They know right from wrong, but they don't know. They don't have good control. They aren't mature at all. When you start looking at them all as nine years, nine years old, it starts to make sense. And that's sad because a lot of people are never going to grow up. A lot of these, these parents are never going to mature. They're never going to fulfill their, they're never going to maximize their potential. Now, I don't know if you can maximize your potential, but you sure can do better. And how do you do it? You read the Bible every day, you access the mind of God, and people will not be able to deceive you as well. Now, we've gone long on this one. So what is it that Yahweh said? Sorry. Yahshua, Jesus, his son, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the body. What did he say? He said two things. He, he repeated these at least once, maybe twice. So you have a double witness in the Bible. The first thing he says Take care that you be not deceived. Think of that on a broad scale. You read the Bible, your mind is going to be freed up. You put the good stuff into the Bible, your intuition is going to build. Your connection to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is going to build. They don't want that. That's more dangerous to them than the damn guns are. Because then you know who the enemy is. And you know how to defend yourself. What's the second thing he says? Hold your ground till I come, till I arrive. Hold your ground. What does that mean? Well, let's look at it as a spiritual thing. Hold on to your faith. So you read the Bible. You talk to other Bible believers. You compare notes. I mean, that's the most wonderful time that I ever have is hanging out with my buddies and we're talking about what's in the Bible, what we detect and all that. And we share freely and we go, wow, man, I, I never thought about that. I didn't know that. But hold your ground also means standing your ground, defending yourself, your very life. So. You have to be prepared to defend your life. And it's going to be getting worse because they don't want you defending yourself. They want you hesitating so the bad guys can destroy you. That's part of their ongoing genocide. This started when Abel was murdered by his half-brother Cain. This is what's referred to in the Bible as the old hatred that was pointed out to me by Pastor Jerry Wicke. I don't think he's of good health right now. And I was told by, by my friends, John, don't, don't go see him. It's, and I decided not to. I wanted to remember him as, as healthy as I knew him. Read the Bible, get one of my Bibles. Put it on the shelf. I know you probably got a standard King James in there. Compare them. And when you see discrepancies between them, there's a reason there are discrepancies. The 1611 King James Bible was produced by my distant relative. He wasn't a good man. He was a brilliant man with the largest vocabulary on the planet probably ever, at least at the time. So it's my privilege to introduce to you the proper name version in which we correct the errors that were present in the 1611 King James Version. And we actually correct the errors that have existed since 
the Greek Septuagint was published about 275 274 BC in Alexandria, Egypt by Ptolemy II, who was not a good guy. Now, if in case you're wondering when I say not a good guy, you ever hear of a guy named Herod, Herod the Great? Well, read it. Herod the Great was an Edomian. It's taken me a while to learn how to correct myself on the pronunciation. He was an Edomian, which is the uh, Greek word, the Hellenized word for Edomite. Herod the Great was one of those that had been forced to convert, or his family had been forced to convert, which allowed him, the family, to survive and him to be born. And so that was about 153, 154 B.C. at the John Hyacinthus required the uh, the Edomites to convert to the one true religion, get circumcised, and and worship the one true God, or be put to death. Of course, they decided to live. And 154 years later, guess who's in charge? The Edomites were running Israel. The Edomites were also instrumental in destroying, completely destroying the last temple. This is the old hatred. You need to understand it. Now, I'd love to have a contest. Then the contest is, is, if you can give me a better title to this doggone video than I put up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Okay? And we're going to leave that, that comment of yours in the comments as well. So if I've said anything wrong, or if I'm missing something, then please correct me. You can do that publicly if you need to, which, or you can do it privately through email. I will be activating my old email accounts. I really was hoping for a partner who would manage my butt and market me, but at this point, that's not gonna happen. I actually offered that to that woman when she decided to destroy the relationship by lording it over me. I'm sorry, baby, you're the one that ended it. I didn't end it. I wouldn't have ended it. I thought you were, well, I had great hope that we might be compatible. Yeah, you're beautiful. So what? Um, the patterns of speech and the, and the way you try to overshadow me, I realize that that's nothing new for you. The problem is it's so universal that no man can safely pair off today. And as long as the courts empower you women, we men aren't going anywhere near you. Why should we risk losing so many assets in short order? How many men have slept homeless in their cars underneath bridges because of these, these judges, these horrible judges in family court? How many men, more men than you could imagine, have, ha have lost everything and had to go sleep in their cars. You don't believe me? Go buy some of these Walmarts and see who's parked. You'll see people living in their cars with their work clothes ready to look for work the next day. And it's gonna get worse. I was gonna go short. I was gonna keep the video short. But at this point, I realize these are kinda like little private lessons between us. Now, I created this channel to teach you, but I want to learn too, and I'm not getting much in the way of appropriate comments or much in the way of help. So yes, I want your help, I want your prayers, I want your blessings. If I say something right or get it right, let me know. If I don't have it quite right, let me know. You see, I, I'm very much open to correction. I'm not done learning. I'm going to be learning until the day I die. And I also realize that this life of mine is entirely in Yahweh's hands. It's already been laid out. And I also realize that my ending shifts. It can shift. Because Yahweh, I'm working with him. I'm not working against him. You know, I'm not trying to uh, compete with him. I'm not trying to play God. I'm not trying to dominate my fellow man. Hello, women. Oh, I, I definitely 
I definitely want to dominate my partner enough so that uh, she knows that I'm there for her, that I'm protective, I'm concerned, I'm watching out for her best interest, and so that she can feel safe and secure. But baby, you don't get that when you want to dominate a man. And that's all I see right now. My uncle was dominated to the point where he lost his mind with his last wife. Most men, their wives are dominant. That's why America is done with. We have no more warriors. Pussies can't stand up to the women. And remember, it's really easy. You put up your shields and you walk off. You have nothing to do with them. Until they come around and treat you with respect, there's no hope. And even at that, I think you probably should just accept the apology and move on. Let it go. Because these are ingrained patterns and they don't change their spots. Not when they're close to 50 years old, they don't change anymore. I hope this video has helped you. We've gone long. I thank you for joining me this far. I always like to have something to give you with some depth to it, with some hope. I'm going to tell you this. Yahweh repents of the evil he has planned when he has given cause. The people of Nineveh showed us the way to salvation in the present. They repented. Every one of them put on sackcloth and fasted. They prayed. They gave up the violence in their hands. They stopped shedding innocent blood, at least for a while. And as a result, the city of Nineveh survived the last Earth Age. They don't want you to know that. So they sent in ISIS to destroy the artwork. Why the artwork? Because we can't replicate it today, which is proof of a superior technology and a superior civilization. Now, what was that civilization noted for before this age? It was noted for its laws and its justice. So look around and tell me how much law and justice there is here today. How much we screwed it up. I mean, my friend believes that on Thanksgiving we genocided the Indians. <laughs> Look, those two Indians walked into the pilgrims knowing damn well we were starving and they brought a bounty for us. They saved our asses. And one of those, one of those Indians had perfect English, which he'd learned in the king's and queen's court in London. And the, the chief he was working with was very compassionate. They taught us everything we needed to know for hunting and, and, and for, for agriculture as well. They taught us how to survive here. If it wasn't for the pilgrims being merciful to us, we wouldn't have straightened our asses out. The original American experiment was a commune. It was a communistic sort of thing where people were going to share. It didn't work. It wasn't until a man could save his wealth and experience the blessings of his own labor that people started to save and people started to compete and people started to actually have proper business society flourished. How many of the pilgrims died the first year? I'm going to tell you this. My ancestor survived. She survived. That's why I'm here. If it wasn't for the two Indians that wandered into their, their colony of Plymouth, I wouldn't be alive today. I think that's a reason to be thankful, to be grateful. But stop practicing this hogwash, stop believing this hogwash that the pilgrims genocided the American Indians. 
We were totally at their mercy. And not only that, they adopted us as their brothers. The friendships must have been fantastic. Half of us didn't make it through that first winter. Half of us died. Now, I don't remember the exact figure. If you could look that up for me and put that down there. And if you want to tell the story of Thanksgiving and put links to it. If you want to praise Yahweh and express your gratitude, please do that. That would warm my heart. May Yahweh bless. May you bless Yahweh.